You've probably used your air fryer to cook one or two meals, but can you cook all your meals for the day in it? We're making breakfast, lunch, and dinner using only our air fryer. Let's get cooking. To start our day off right, we're gonna need a little breakfast and what better way than with a little turkey bacon, a little bit of egg and some MacGyvering in the morning. We're gonna whip up some healthy breakfast sandwiches in under 10 minutes. First thing we have to do is make some egg molds. Using some egg rings or the lid from a large mouth mason jar and some aluminum foil, we can form some sort of bowl to contain our eggs. Just make sure you push it all the way down so that it sits flat on the bottom. This is just gonna help prevent spilling. Now we're gonna crack three eggs into a bowl and season with some salt and pepper and give them a good forking. Spray your newly formed bowls with some non-stick cooking spray and pour your eggs inside. Lay two pieces of turkey bacon into your basket as well and we're ready to get cooking. Preheat your air fryer to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and allow your eggs and bacon to cook for four minutes. Once your four minutes is up, open the lid and remove the turkey bacon. It should be just a little bit crispy, but not crazily overcooked. Your eggs are probably still gonna be a little bit runny, so let's toss in our English muffins and give them a good toasting while our eggs finish up about another three minutes. Carefully remove your basket or just burn yourself like I did. And now it's time to assemble. Grab your English muffin and give them a little squirt of ketchup. Remove your eggs from the mold. That was easier than I thought and stack on top of the muffin. Top the eggs with a slice of medium cheddar cheese and your one strip of turkey bacon cut in half. Place the top bun atop the mountain of breakfast goodness. Cut in half and voila. A quick, delicious breakfast sandwich that only takes 10 minutes to make, so no more excuses on why you're skipping breakfast. You don't even need to watch the eggs cook. If you're thinking of going and grabbing takeout for lunch, stop it. This spicy chicken sandwich is all the goodness of fast food without all the empty calories. Start by laying a chicken breast between two pieces of plastic wrap and pounding it with a heavy bottom pan or meat mallet until it's a consistent size throughout, about one inch. I know we just did this last week, but when it comes to chicken breast, you really want to do this every single time. It's gonna cook more consistently the more even you can make it. Now cut it in half so that we have two even sized pieces. It's time to make our breading. Grab yourself two shallow dishes or plates. I like to use pie plates. In the first bowl or plate, crack one egg and whisk in two tablespoons of your favorite hot sauce. If you're an OG to this channel, you already know my favorite hot sauce is Frank's. Give it a good whisk until combined and set aside. In our second plate, combine one quarter cup breadcrumbs, one quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs for a little extra crunch, one teaspoon smoked paprika, one teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a few cracks of black pepper, and half a teaspoon cayenne pepper if you want some extra kick. Give that a little mix until everything is well combined and it's time to bread our chicken. Using the wet hand dry hand technique, bathe your chicken breast in the egg mixture, thoroughly coating it and then placing it into the breadcrumbs, ensuring an even coating on both sides. Don't forget the edges as well. We're gonna double coat these for a little extra crispiness. Toss it back into the egg and son of a, every time I bread, I forget to keep one hand dry. Wash your hands and then get it back into the breadcrumbs. Once coated, set it aside and repeat with the other half of your chicken. This recipe can be easily doubled if you need to make more than two servings. Place your breaded breast into the basket of your air fryer and give them a little spritz of oil to ensure even crisping. In your preheated 400 degree air fryer, drop your basket and allow to cook for five minutes. Give them a little flip without messing with it too much and losing all your breading and cook for another five minutes or until an instant read thermometer reads 165 degrees in the center of your breast. While that's cooking, let's make a quick chipotle aioli. We're gonna start by separating one egg yolk from its whites and placing the egg yolk in the bowl of a stand mixer with the whisking attachment attached. Don't waste these egg whites though. Use it to make an omelet in the morning. Next, add in two teaspoons of Dijon mustard and turn it onto a medium high speed and mix for about 15 seconds. Now turn it up to high speed and slowly begin drizzling in one cup of olive oil. Oil. You'll want to start off really slowly until you start to see an emulsification, after which you can begin pouring in a little bit faster. Once you have a beautiful looking mayo consistency, turn it off and season with one tablespoon white wine vinegar, one chipotle that we roughly chopped, along with one teaspoon of its accompanying adobo sauce, and some salt and pepper to taste. Give this a good mix until well combined and serve in a bowl. I was going to use a food processor for this, but it wasn't working the way I wanted it to, and that's why we didn't chop the chipotle into smaller pieces. Just remove the huge chunks and we're good to go. Once your chicken is done, it's time to assemble our sandwich. Start with a lightly toasted bun bottom and give it about one tablespoon of our homemade aioli. Layer on your deliciously crispy looking chicken, a piece of iceberg lettuce, a few slices of tomato, and smear the top bun with another thick dollop of our chipotle aioli. And I'm telling you, this chicken sandwich is an absolute 
game changer. It was so crunchy and had just the right amount of spice and that chipotle aioli is absolutely fire. If you want a little less carb, just make these as chicken tenders and dip them directly in the aioli. You'll thank me later. To round out our full day of air fryer eating, it's time for a little fish and chips, or at least a version of fish and chips. We're making fresh salmon patties served with wedges and a homemade tzatziki sauce. Our wedges are gonna take some time to cook, so let's start there. Start by cutting two russet potatoes into wedges. Easiest way is to cut them in half, then in half again, then into three wedges per quarter. Just watch your fingies. Place into a bowl and top with two teaspoons neutral oil, one teaspoon garlic powder, half a teaspoon of paprika, and a generous pinch of kosher salt. Give these a good toss to coat evenly and place them into a 400 degree air fryer for 15 minutes, flipping halfway through. Once they're cooked through and crispy, remove from the basket and top with one quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Now let's set those aside and make our salmon patties. Start with a 12 ounce salmon filet and cut it into palm sized pieces. Most recipes for these salmon patties want you to use canned salmon, don't do that. Fresh is so much better. Toss it into a blender and give it a few pulses until it starts to look like ground meat. Alternatively, you can chop this really finely with a knife. Scrape it into a bowl and combine it with one large egg, one third of a cup of panko breadcrumbs, one tablespoon Dijon mustard, one tablespoon lemon juice, and one tablespoon fresh dill. Give it a good mixing until everything is well combined and let it sit for about two minutes. This is just gonna help thicken it up so that we can form it into stable patties. While that's thickening up, go ahead and slice four slices of lemon. We'll use these to layer under our salmon cakes to prevent them from sticking in our air fryer basket. Using your hands, form four even sized salmon patties about three quarters of an inch thick. Use the lemon slices to help get them off your hands, although they shouldn't be too sticky. Place your basket in a pre heated 390 degree air fryer and cook for eight minutes, flipping halfway through. I removed the lemon slices at the halfway mark and gave the undersides a little spray with non-stick cooking spray. They weren't crisping up the way that I wanted them to, and this helped. Because we're cooking with fresh salmon, just probe the patties and remove once it reads 145 degrees. A little over or under is not gonna kill you though. Last thing we have to make is our homemade tzatziki. We're gonna start by grating one cup of cucumbers, and as per usual, I'm using mini cukes because they just taste so much better. To help remove some of the moisture, place them in a clean kitchen towel, I promise this is clean, and gently twist, squeezing out as much cucumber water as possible. I don't recommend that you drink this straight, but my dog really seemed to like it. In a bowl with one cup of non-fat plain Greek yogurt, add in your freshly squeezed cucumber pieces. Grate in one clove of garlic using a microplaner, if you have one, or the smallest holes on your box grater. Squeeze in one tablespoon lemon juice, or about half a lemon's worth, and add in one tablespoon fresh dill. Season with a little salt, give it a mix, and you're ready to eat dinner. To assemble this, place about half of your potato wedges onto a plate, add two of our crispy salmon cakes, and top with a very generous tablespoon of our homemade tzatziki. Our salmon cakes were incredibly moist on the inside with a little crispy texture on the outside, and trust me, the fresh salmon goes a long way compared to canned salmon. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, and you know, click that thumbs up if you haven't already. Until next time, get cooking.